This podcast is supported by Notch Beer, brewing and serving European-influenced beer in their beer hall and beer garden, and not only their beautiful location in Salem, Massachusetts on the Salem Harbor, but also in their brand new brewery at 525 Western Avenue in Brighton, Mass., just minutes from downtown Boston, where they also have a beer hall and a beer garden, and check this out, an outdoor live performance and music space. Not only do you get some of the finest brews around, but you can also enjoy live music in their outdoor venue, and indoors they have a DJ spinning vinyl. How cool is that? You know how much we love vinyl around here. And it even gets better. They have free parking. You know how hard it is to get free parking in Boston? It's almost impossible, but they have parking. Notch's beer is available at retail locations throughout Mass and Rhode Island and also through mail order direct from Mass and PA. If you haven't tried Notch yet, it's about time you do. Get yourself a Notch beer or better yet, head over to Notch Brewing and tell them Twisted Rico sent you. Welcome to Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo. This week, we're playing you an interview that we did with Justine Kovalt, leader of the outstanding band Justine and the Unclean, and also the owner and operator of Red on Red Records. I'm pretty excited to have Justine on, just so I can ask her about Malachite, a band that she was in in the early 90s that unfortunately I never got to see, but did get a hold of one of their demos, and they were like a fantastic heavy band back in the day, no doubt. So, uh, you know, we're going to ask her about them and some of her other bands, and of course talk about Justine and the Unclean which is a really great band with some of the best musicians around. You might remember the high praise that Nat Friedberg gave drummer Jim Genoda, who's the drummer of Justine and the Unclean, when he was on the show. And then there's Charles Hansen, who is highly regarded as one of the best guitar players to emerge from the Boston rock scene for many, many years. He was in Ross Fazer. He's just a really great guitar player and of course Janet Egan who has a long history with Justine and also played in the band Heidi who were signed to Warner Brothers and of course we'll talk about Red on Red and Justine definitely had a lot to say about her label and she gave it she filled us in on a lot of good things it's really fun interview so we're going to play that for you in a couple minutes but let's listen to a song first this is the latest track from Justine and the Unclean, song that once you hear it, you start singing it to yourself and it won't go away. (laughs) It's called Scorpion Bowl to Go, and here it is.
so it seems like Scorpion Bowl to go has been like an anthem for being trapped in the house during the <laughs> pandemic. Is that what basically how the song came about? In your because you wrote the tune, right? Yeah, that's basically how the song came about. It was kind of during the height of everyone being very isolated and starting to go a little bit crazy and coming up with some um, really pretty poor coping mechanisms for the that feeling of despair and um, being trapped and um, just l- looking to get some takeout food and going, oh, look, I can get a scorpion bowl to go. Like, that's the only thing that's good about this whole situation. <laughs> Which I can relate to because I had to quit drinking, which I did in March because I was on like a, you know, a bottle of wine a day and more. Uh, It started right, well, maybe before the pandemic, but it got worse during the pandemic and I was just like out of control. Yeah. So, I mean. I I think it's a time that kind of um, really uh, brought out a darkness in some people. It's just hard to live that way. We're not used to it, you know, and the kind of... um, The concern and the worry combined with not being able to see the people that you love, it's really tough. And uh, a lot of people have a lot of people have had a really hard time. Um, So while the song is meant to be kind of a a, like taking a wry twist on that, it's uh, yeah, it's been been a hard time for a lot of folks. I like this song. I like the video. I love how you guys put your names on the amps and behind you and everything in the video. That was a really cool. Was that your idea? Um, yeah, so that was my concept, but the art was done by um, Crispin Wood from The Bags. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he did all the backgrounds. He does a lot of art for the label, um, and uh, he's very, very talented. And he's a great cartoonist, and so he did the backgrounds, and then we did green screen for uh, uh, all of us, our first time doing green screen, which was hilarious. So many things can go wrong when you're doing that, but uh, we had a great time making that video, and we did it... Um, we hadn't, as a band, hadn't seen each other in like a year when we did that video. Wow. That must have been challenging. Yeah, very challenging. But you started your record label during the pandemic, I sure you? did. <laughs> so you took advantage of the time. Well, I guess filed that under a, a slightly better coping mechanism. Um, when it became clear that um, I wasn't going to be able to play with either of my bands, I wasn't going to be able to do shows, um, uh, recording was going to be really challenging. Um, I, I needed, um, you know, something to keep me inspired. And prior to starting the label, um, we had, um, I had gotten together with a group of women, um, and put together this, uh, regional tour called Whistle Stop Rock. Yeah. Um, and it was all bands with a strong female presence. And, um, we had, we were booked all over New England and we only got to do our first two shows. And then the pandemic hit and, um, during that time, that was the spring of 2020, um, we ended up writing a song together. So what happened was Simone Burke from Kid Gulliver and Linnea Herzog from Linnea's Garden, um, we were all on a group thread that was getting a little bit raunchy about drive-ins because we were thinking, oh, maybe in the spring we can do an outdoor show at a drive-in. Started talking about our experiences at the drive-in. <laughs> and um, and Simone said, well, I was the dry hump queen of my high school, and we all cracked up. And I said, wow, that's a song. And so she just went away and in one night, wrote the lyrics, sent them out. Linnea, the next night, wrote the music, and all of a sudden it was a song. And we recorded it um, all separately, and then David Minahan cut it all together. Um, and um, it, it turned out to be, like, a really fun thing. And then we made a video of us all shooting separately and putting it together. So started to learn how you can be collaborative and have a good time, even when, when you're in isolation. Um, and from that kind of sprung the idea for the label, because what happened was I took that song to, to Lou Mansdorf from Rumbar Records, yeah. um, great friend and mentor of mine, and said, do you want to put this out? And he said, well, it's just a single, uh, you know, there's not going to be an album. I, it's probably not for my label, but geez, Justine, did you ever think about starting a label? And I was like, oh, that's crazy. And then like a few weeks went by and I went, hmm, yeah, you know, that could be cool because um, I love when musicians collaborate together. I love when musicians support each other um, and the kind of voice of all the bands together becomes amplified you know it's sort of like um we're all excited about making music we're all excited about rock and roll we're all excited about being on the label and we all support each other and that's kind of where that came from it it became this really kind of positive thing to do during the pandemic when you know just to stay busy 
I love Lou. Lou was on the show. A yeah, while back he rules. We've known each other for a while. He's. Really, I know a lot of people that we we know a lot of the same people, but I don't think we've ever really talked to each other very much. Probably because we've been in different places. I haven't been here the whole time, but I know about your whole career. And I wanted to like go all the way back here. I want, are you originally from Boston? No, I'm originally from Michigan. Uh, oh yeah, we yeah Detroit. So yeah, kind of halfway between Detroit and Ann Arbor. Um, but I came out here to go to college, and um, and I and I just Which never school? went back. Uh, Boston University. Bu. Yep. Yeah. So is that so? Um, was this around the time was Malachite your first band that you? No, actually. So the first band that I was in here was actually a band called Quest for Tuna, and that was oh, with my okay. college buddies um, Evan Shore, Jay Allen, and Mark Gilmore, and. Um, and I actually just on the label released one of the recordings that we yeah, did I in 1989. Yeah. It's called She Can't Surf, But She Sure Can Bowl. That was recorded with Sean Slade at Fort Apache in 1989. Wow. Yeah. And um, Jay unearthed the masters and we had to have them baked and everything and, and remastered. But um, I, I put we've got a whole EP that we're going to put out of stuff from 1989. Vintage Boston surf punk music i like that i heard that track and i didn't even realize that that was an old track i saw muck uh muck i call him muck evan on drums and i was like yeah oh, yeah was cool <laughs> yeah he was the drummer yeah that's awesome so um was that band together for a long time we were together on and off um for a long time and we still occasionally reunite um we're talking about possibly this fall uh, mark gilmore lives in albuquerque now but we're talking about possibly doing a show this fall that's cool yeah we it's fun i mean we've all been friends for 30 plus years i imagine this is like the late 80s we're talking about yep yeah and yeah. um malachite formed in the early 90s yeah malachite was early 90s and um i joined that band i think in 91 um and that was a ton of fun so malachite for people that don't know was an all-female metal band um it was myself Linnea Mills, um, she, sorry, Linnea Mills. She, she spells Linnea but goes by Linnea. Uh, Janet Egan and Gay Hebert on drums. And we had the best time. Um, we just, we practiced like four hours a night, four nights a week because we just loved each other's company so much. And we were so, just wanted to be, have the biggest, loudest, baddest sound. Um, and we played all over the place. We, it was, and it was fun. I have a, a Malachite demo, but I believe it's, Nancy Fenera, rest in peace. Nancy Fenera and Jen Cobran. Yeah, that yeah. was after uh, Linnea left the band and then those two joined. I have to ask you, what ever happened to her? Because she was like a star and then people just said she kind of just disappeared. Yeah, so she um, it, it was an incredibly talented and very charismatic, just like riveting um, on stage. And um, she just kind of, um, she struggled with um, recording and with kind of, touring like the the pressure of it was a lot for her um and she eventually moved to vermont and she's a, a real animal lover and was like working at a, a, a veterinarian thing. last time i heard from her it's been a while she's kind of off the grid so she never played again nope wow because you guys had a good buzz going i know a lot yeah. of bands around that time were putting you on their shows oh yeah we had... actually were booked to record with steve albini right before oh. she left the band it was the saddest oh. thing but i understood it she was kind of getting to her it, it's pressure you know I was out in California and the buzz reached me. <laughs> so I remember <laughs> uh, you and Janet have had like a long, um, really long history together and you, you formed Swank. After yeah. So that. Swank was after Malachi. That was um, me and Janet and Gay Hebert right. on drums. Janet is one of my best friends. She's just wonderful. We've been really, really tight for years. And um, she's in my current band, Justin the yes. Unclean, playing bass. Um, but we've stayed in touch through all this time. Um, and, um, so yeah, Swank was a three-piece, um, uh, not not quite as metal, a little more like grunge, hard rock, um, and we did that for about a year or two, and we put out two records on uh, Curve of the Earth, right? Um, and then and then I kind of stopped playing for a while, um, and got married, um, had a kid, got really focused on kind of that and stepped out of the scene for a little while. I was going to ask you about the long break between bands. Yeah. Um, the, so I, I kind of felt at that time like, okay, I can, I can work a full-time job and I can raise a kid and, um, you know, be part of a family. Um, I can do all that. And that's plenty. Um, can't, to, to a layer of uh, being in a band on top of that it was just too much um so i, I was kind of like i have to choose my priorities and and i'm glad i did i'm you know i, I have a wonderful kid 
How uh, old is your child now? She's 22. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, she's 22 and she's a rocker in her own right. She plays amazing guitar. Nice. Yeah, she's a great kid. Um, so Justine and the Unclean, I remember the first time I heard it, I, I actually wrote a review of it when I first got it and I saw the lineup and, you know, I, I know Jim Genota from the bags and upper yep. crust and Charles Hansen has his reputation as one of the great guitar players yeah, around here. Justly so. <laughs> and then you and Janet and I was like, this is a real all-star band. I remember when Nat Friedberg was on my show, he called Jim the the best drummer in Boston. Oh, he's phenomenal. He's up there for yep. sure. Sorry, Mike. Mike Nash is engineering our show. He happens to be a drummer, so... I always have to apologize to him when I talk about other drummers. <laughs> um, so the minute, it seemed like the minute you guys got it together and you put out Get Unclean was the name of the first record. Right. And I heard it, I was like, you guys had a really well-crafted image. You had great musicianship. Everything came to, was together. Did, was this something that was in your head or did you guys all come up with this plan? Or Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I started... Um, in 2015, um, woke up one day and was like, suddenly felt like writing a song for the first time in, you know, 15 years. And, um, wow. and, and 15 years. Yeah. Huh? I just was away from it for a while. Um, and listened to a lot of music during that time, but just wasn't really playing. And, um, I was really rusty. Like I could barely play guitar. My voice was not there. Like I was, but all of a sudden these songs just kind of came pouring out of me and I started to, hear what I wanted this band to sound like. And um, and then um, the first person to join was Charles, actually. Um, Did and, you and Charles know each other for a long time? Yeah, I knew him from Ross Phaser. Oh, um, great band. And they also, had that singer with that Getty League voice. I remember yeah, that band. Yeah. They were cool. Yeah, and Charles is just great. He's so, um, yeah. he has this dry wit that I really appreciate, but he's just the sweetest guy and such a great player. And I started to go out and see bands again, and he came up to me and he said, what are you doing out again? And I said, I want to put a band together. And he's like, I'm in. I'm like, whoa, really? all right. Um, he said, I'm in, unless the songs are shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, ooh. So then I sent him the songs, and he's like, they're not shit. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Did you realize this was a garage rock band right away? You know, the garage rock genre. Did you realize that? Yeah, I mean, that that's kind of um, kind of where I came from in, like, Boston, late 80s, garage punk. Um, but also, like, a little bit of kind of um, ACDC sound, which I'm really into. Um, and, you know, Jim on drums, yeah. he, he elevates it a little bit above Garage. He's so good and, like, he's so meticulous. He really thinks about each song and exactly what he's going to play. Um, and then we had trouble um, locating a bass player. And um, for a while, uh, Carl Biancucci played bass. Oh, really? Um, yep. And Classic before, Ruins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was phenomenal, but um, he was just, uh, he was uh, already in a bunch of other bands. And um, same with, uh, played with Judd Williams for a little bit before Jim joined the band. And then Judd went on tour with the Real Kids and was like, okay. Um, so we ended up with this lineup, but couldn't find a bass player. And um, and I was talking to Janet about it and getting her advice because she's um, also worked in the music industry a lot. And she, and we were just uh, like you know sitting around at Jimmy Steerhouse drinking martinis talking about this. And she said, "Okay, I got a crazy idea. What if I play bass?" And I was like, "Oh yeah." Um, and turns out she's a natural. She's now, really, you guys were really in good. Bands together, and, and you played bass, and she played. That's guitar. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, she sings backups too. She's a great singer. Does she comes up with all her own harmony parts? Does she do really the good. oh 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 part? In uh -huh. the, uh, yeah, I love she that does. part. You know, sorry, I've been singing that song nonstop. She does the I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys. Well, you know, sometimes when you have chemistry, you know, you you always have it. It's like, right, right. Like getting back on the bicycle, right? So, um. So you recorded with Minahan. Right. I know Dave, I've known David for years. I worked with the Hood, so I thought he was a good producer for you guys. Yeah, he's perfect, actually. Um, I, I, uh, we recorded with him, Justine the Unclean, and also my other band, Justine's Black Threads, which is more of like a rockabilly slash country trio. Yeah, I heard but that he, too. It's cool. He handled that really well. I'm really happy with the way that stuff came out. He's great. He's all around great. I also recorded with him the Red on Red Records theme song, which is. Um, Jim Genota, Lee Harrington, and Dave Minahan plays and sings on it too with me. Um, so wow. the, and we did that during the pandemic. It was like some some stuff recorded separately. Some of us in the studio wearing masks. You know, it was really. Um, but it, it I was like. 
my label needs a theme song. Yep, <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Sure, you know why? I not? love the way you think. Every na- every label and band I think need theme songs. <laughs> you know, I love that. <laughs> did you meet Lee through David, or did you know Lee? Um, so I actually met Lee through the mess around. Um, so I knew him back in the day, but not w- terribly well. But um, you know, the mess around is this residency that I do at the Plow with Jay Allen and Tom Baker, and we mm-hmm. have guests. And um, Lee came to be uh, to play one of those. It was probably two or three years ago, and he was perfect for the mess around. He's got the best sense of humor, and um, I love Lee. great solo acoustic player. Great choice in covers, did some originals. It was like, I was like, whoa, he's one of us. And um, and so we struck up a friendship. Um, and then um, during the pandemic, he was writing songs and, um, you know, sent um, them to me. And one of the songs he sent to me was Real Love. And I was like, oh, my God, this song is so good and then i heard from linda mandolin she's like lee asked me to collaborate with him i'm over the moon and i'm like oh (laughs) you guys are on my label i'm putting this out um so he wrote that song she wrote a song too um and they're they're slowly but surely putting out more and more material i I don't have to ask the questions because she's you're beating me to the the questions I'm going to ask before I ask, which I like very much. I, I it makes my job easy. <laughs> so, um, just getting back to Justine and the Unclean for a second. Um, when you guys did you guys record the record and then get a deal with Rumbar Records? Yep, you did. So Lou heard it and he just flipped out over it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so we I had the whole song mastered and like ready to go, and I was planning to put it out myself, and then. Uh, uh, Tom Baker suggested that I send it to Lou because he heard it and he said, oh, wow, this is really good. I think it's perfect for Lou's label. And I, So I sent it to Lou and Lou loved it. He picked it up and it was great. And he put out two records. He put out Get Unclean and then he put out Heartaches and Hot Problems. Great records, both of them. Uh, you mentioned Tom Baker a couple of times. I'm a huge Tom Baker fan. I just He's such a good songwriter and his voice and everything. Uh, is he on your label now or is he still at Rumbar? He's not. He's at Rumbar. And um, so, you know, when I started the label, Lou and I made a deal that, like you know, we're, we won't we won't uh you know cross Steel bands cross the other. beams, yeah. But but and and we're very supportive of each other. Um, I support Rumbar bands. He supports my bands. Um, so um, so Tom Baker is part of the mess around, and I will um have Rumbar artists be part of my showcases and That's um, cool. both both uh, virtual showcases and live showcases and vice versa. We 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 uh we support each other 100. percent I like friendly relationships between labels. I remember when I worked at Enigma Records, we every Wednesday for a while were getting together with Chuck Dukowski and Joe and the guys from SST, Greg Ginn, and we'd go out and have Mexican food with them. I uh-huh. was really young then, too, and I had no idea that I'm hanging out with. I knew who they were, but I had no idea that how legendary they would be. And, you know, that camaraderie between the labels has always been yeah. a good thing. Your label's off to a fantastic start. And uh, how long did it take you to get this whole roster together? You mentioned the, about the Lee thing, but you've put together a pretty good roster here. And I'm going to mention some of these people. But did you have a list like in your head? And you said, I'm going to get all these bands? I mean, yeah, that's a great question. So I did have a short list um, just based on um, some of the some of the musicians I met doing Whistle Stop rock um and also just bands that i had admired so for example the chelsea curve the first time i saw them play i was like this band is amazing songs are great they sound great they have such good energy um so they were one of the first ones that came to mind for me but um but also um kid gulliver linnea's garden um those those are the ones cold expectations were some of the first ones that um that i that i signed and in part it was not just bands that I really admired, but I was looking for great songwriting, great performance, um, commitment to quality in terms of recording and art and videos and stuff like that. But also people that I could trust, people that I knew I wanted to work with and knew would would kind of get the um, the spirit of the label and right. the, the the support. Um, you have a great vision, by the way, of how the label for someone that never worked at a record label, right? I never worked at a record label. That's true. Yep. Yeah. It's, it, I learned a lot just from 
um, promoting my own bands. Right. And learned a lot through Whistle Stop Rock. Learned a lot from Lou at Rumbar. He really taught me a lot. Um, but one of the other bands that I signed really early on was The Neighborhoods. And um, and that was really exciting. It's kind of like, Whoa. We have something in common. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually have them signed to the label? Yeah, yeah. So I, I re-released... Um, the live last, album. Last Known yeah. Address and The Last Rat. Um, because those those records were not on Bandcamp yet, so I set them up on Bandcamp and pushed oh, a couple of singles that. for that. Good idea. Yeah. Um. And you know, there there's um they've got one more record in the can, which we may or may not get around to putting out. But um, but also David Minahan is thinking about a solo record. Wow. Yeah. This is some breaking news. I like to break things on my show. That's well, you know, I love those guys and anything. Yeah, they they're do phenomenal. Is just. Uh, the the uh, the last known address bygone era. I think I've played like three times. That's a great song. And I had yeah. Leon, and we we were mostly talking about old stuff when I had Leon, and it was before him and Linda recorded. Yeah. But uh, that is really exciting. If if Minihan puts a solo record out, that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. And another neighborhoods record because the last record. Wasn't that did, Lee told me they started recording that in like 2006? Yeah, they've got they've, they've got a record that they recorded actually in the 90s that never came out. Um, wow. And the the, um, the code name for it is Last of the Mohicans. But we'll see. I can't make any promises on that one. Um, well, this is really exciting. Yeah. Um, you didn't mention another band, Night Spell, which I uh, heard it's like a pretty trippy indie rock all star band. Yes. I know Joyce from Scarce. Joyce from Scarce. I worked for A and M, and she was they were on A and M. Unfortunately, cool. they had to because uh, Chick got ill, and it kind of put a yeah. The whole thing fell apart before so, it started. Um. So Joyce. Um. And Shauna from, uh, she was in uh, Swirlies and Syrup USA. Yeah, great band. So Shauna is a, a friend of mine from back in the, the 80s and 90s. Um, they have a podcast called the Red Jumpsuit Podcast, and they had me down to talk about Whistle Stop Rock. And um, and so I got to know Joyce and loved her. She was just just the coolest. And um, and then they they there was a drum kit in the room, and I said, who's playing drums? And Joyce is like, I am. And I was like, well, that's cool. And then they posted – uh, a picture of them practicing and I was like hmm and so I got a hold of Shauna and I said send me what you're doing and so they actually sent me uh, their practice tape and I was blown away I was like oh, it's so good it sounds like um like belly and like I mean it just it has that sound that like um 90 sound but modern I mean it, it in the songwriting is phenomenal harmonies like I'm really into that band I think they should be enormous they've only put out two singles so far two singles each one with a video um but they, they are slowly but surely recording more and more stuff and they have Roger LaValle come and produce and they do it at home so it's nice. cool yeah yeah, I, when I heard the track, that one of the tracks I heard, I was like, "Wow, it's like really trippy." It's like really good. And did you mention the Day Lilies? You have them yeah, too, right? Yeah, so the Day Lilies, um, I I picked up. They so so what happened was when um we did the announcement about the label and the original core set of like six or seven bands, um, bands started to get excited about it and um especially because we were doing these um virtual shows online and people didn't have any any place to go they're stuck at home so people were really into these virtual shows that we were doing and um and i had bands start to reach out to me and daylilies was one of those bands and um i had seen them play um when they released their first ep um i i, I saw their i went to their ep release party at the burn you know a couple years ago and i was like wow this band's really captivating and then we played in the rumble with them unclean was in the same rumble as the daylilies and i love them i love ad frank it's just like such a rock star and the combination of him with with uh laura Klein, like perfect yeah it's a really cool band yeah 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 they're, and they're different yeah and so They'll, um, I'll be putting out another single by them in um, late August uh, with a video and then at some point a full length. Nice. You mentioned the rumble. Is it true that Justine and the Unclean had a real like brawl situation with Test Meat? Or is that just a rumor <laughs> that I heard? From no, someone? it's true. Yeah. No, we, we totally, it was, we were going to make the rumble real. Yeah. I was, I was going to kick Daryl's ass. No, I mean, we, we were, we kind of had a, a big running joke about that, but I love I heard test that meat. Joke. I love test meat. I think they're phenomenal. Um, I love when labels turn 
shows into events. And both you and Lou have done a great job of that. You put together these big bills, you have parties, you, you just turn it into a big event. And I, and now I saw, um, I think at, at the town, the city festival, it looked like it might be one of your shows. No, no. Um, uh, some of the label artists are playing town in the city. So uh, I believe Chelsea Curve and Linnea's yeah, Garden. There was a TBA for the headliner of that show. And I was thinking maybe it was, you know, Justine. And oh, the no, no. That's that. That wasn't mine. That's all Chris Porter, who I love. Um, Chris but, was on the show, too. Yeah, he's yeah, a great he's guy. Great. But we have a big show com- coming up, actually. Uh, plug, plug. At please. Uh, dusk, uh, this coming Saturday, it's a benefit for um, Robin Lane's nonprofit, Songbird Sings. Nice. Which helps uh, uh, women recover from trauma through music and songwriting and singing. Um, and so it'll be Robin Lane, and it is also a an EP release party for Kid Gulliver's Gimme Some Go EP. And the other bands are Night Spell, The Jack Lights, and Justine and the Unclean. And that's going to be outdoor show at dusk this coming Saturday. This Saturday? Yep. Which? The 14th. We, the Maybe we'll be last be Saturday by the time we <laughs> say. Well, you know what? I can tell you about another one. How about this? Uh, Friday, August 20th at once, we've got a Red on Red Records showcase. Ooh, okay. And that will be uh, Camila featuring Cruel Miracle, Linnea's Garden, The Chelsea Curve, and Cold Expectations. Cold so, that, Expectations. Cold Expectations. That is um, Steve from My Own Worst Enemy, Steve Pregoda. Oh, nice. Um, and he's got um, Joellen uh, Giannis, who uh, is a DJ at WMFO. She plays bass and sings. Um, and they got Nancy um, Delaney on drums. They're trio, kind of jangly, but um, a little bit, a little bit experimental. The Steve does a lot of stuff with pedals and loops, and um, they're they're awesome. Um, so they put out a couple of singles on the label. They and we'll have another single from them in the fall. Uh, I was going to ask you that question. So right now, as far as the release schedule goes, what what are the most imminent releases that are coming? Yeah, great question. So, um, mm-hmm. so we've j- and just to say also, we've done mostly digital singles to date. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you if you're doing a physical product. As starting, well. we're starting to do physical product now. We're, I'm going to have um, probably starting with CDs, and then um, if that goes well, we'll get into the major investment that is vinyl. But um, I love vinyl. <laughs> I know everybody loves vinyl. It's expensive. Vinyl is really uh, hard to do right expensive. now too. There are a lot of issues with the supply chain so it's a long way to get something on press but we will have that at some point so um so let me tell you what's coming uh just briefly very recent releases the jack lights which is this really upcoming um punk trio um melodic punk from boston i love the song beach yeah I was that's gonna mention yeah that. i forgot to mention these guys thanks for bringing that up yeah that's their latest single and also they've got a um a video for it that Treebeard Media did, and um, that it's part of their EP called Drift, and it's phenomenal. Um, Linnea's Garden, um, we did an EP with them, um, I think it was back in April, um, and but they've just uh, are recording a full length, um, so more stuff from them will be forthcoming. Um, and they're playing a big show at the Sinclair um, before they play the show at once. Um, with they're up on the second night of the Freeze Pop record release. Um, the Freeze che- Pop, Freeze oh, yeah, I heard Pop. their uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, the Chelsea Curve, um, they're doing a thing they're calling the single scene. They're doing a single every single month through November. Um, and Love that's, that. yeah, it's been great. So, so they've got something coming out at the, we do the last Wednesday of every month with them. So they, they have, they'll have another single at the end of this month. Um, and then an album in early 2021. Um, and 2022, you mean? I mean, yeah, 2022. Yeah. Thank you. I forget what year. I know. I, I've too. lost track. I still of the, feel like it's 2020. It just seems it won't go away. The space know? time continuum <laughs> is all messed up right now. Um, Andrea Gillis, um, Andrea. we did a single for her. Um, leave the light on and we'll have another one probably in a month or so. You have so many artists that I, I forgot to mention them all and I apologize for that because you have a great roster. Andrea, you know, is fantastic. Yeah, she's the best. Great singer. Yeah, great singer and just a great person and just that that band live just jaw-dropping, like powerful. Um, so, yeah, and, and they... Does she still have Bruce playing drums? Uh, what? So I think she's got her lineup changes every once in a while but um because i remember bruce from boy wonder <laughs> i know i'm dating no, myself the, the with guy that, that but... the guy that um when i saw her the last couple times um 
Eric. Eric. Uh, it's okay. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. You can't remember everyone. No, every he was super band. nice too, and I feel bad. But anyway, he's really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to also ask you, um, you know, you're doing all this stuff right now, and I like to ask my guests this. Is there any other, like, new music that you're listening to these days, like stuff that's come out within the last few years that, you know, maybe something that's not Boston or... Um, yeah, so there's so there's a band out of Stockholm. They're called Stupidity. Oh yeah, yeah, and they're they're really really the nicest guys. But they um they've been recording with um Keith Strang from the Flesh Tones, yeah. and that stuff's great. It's really good. Like they know how to make rock and roll. Um, I really like them. There's also this band out of um Florida called the Blips. Um. That I'm really into. They, I, they, they have one song that I keep hearing on uh, Little Stevens, and I'm just like loving it. It's called Inside Out. Um, and what else? Um, everybody, of course, is going crazy over the Linda Lindas. Um, yeah, I like them too. Yeah, so stu- uh, that's kind of stuff that I like. Um, we did um, for for the Kid Gulliver virtual uh, EP release party. We had a lot of bands um, from everywhere because we, it, you can do that when you're doing a virtual show. So we had BB Galini. They're I on, watched some on, of on that. Rumbar. Yeah. They're really that good. Was great. Um, the Gold Needles. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember all the bands that were there. Anyway, we had a lot of bands. Stupidity was part of that again. It's so. great that you you have an outreach thing going on here with all these bands, and you, you're helping them all out. And there are some are on your label, some are on other labels. That's right. The yeah. scene is like you 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 guys, you and Lou especially, you really got a good thing going in Boston right now. We hope so. We like to think that we're putting Boston on the map. Yeah, again. Radio stations and internet and other kind of stations are playing you a lot of your stuff yep. that you're releasing. Yeah, we're get, th- getting a lot of support. It's really lovely. And, um, and you know, it's funny you mentioned kind of bands that are on the label or not on the label. One of the things that I've found is that, um, you know, word is getting out and I'm being approached by a lot of bands who want to be on the label. And I can only handle so much. It's like I, I have a real commitment to the bands that I've already signed to really um, work with them and, and build their audience and um, get their music listened to. And that's a huge time commitment. So I'm really careful about what I take on. That said, if if a band approaches me and I like them, but I just can't take them on right now, I'll do something else for them, like have them be part of a virtual show or promote their release or um, and, you know, in, in, in other ways, support them in their music, because I think that's really important. It's like we're all part of the same kind of like worldwide, like rock and roll community. Has anyone told you yet that you're too nice for the music industry? <laughs> I get a lot of that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love, by the way. You know, I had my own label and worked for labels and managed bands and did everything. It's a really rough. It can be rough, but if you have a good mind frame like you have you yeah can i mean handle it you know one of the things that works for me is i'm kind of inured to rejection like i, I can't tell you the millions of times somebody has said no to me over it's the popular last word four or five industry. years and that's fine you know it's like you just got to be like okay i'll i'll do something else um the other thing that's interesting is the number of people that have told me i can't do the things i you can't do this you can't you this you have to stick to a single genre or you can't have a country band, or there's no you rules. Can't. I don't. I yeah, think and there, I'm like, I don't think there's says? rules. Like, really, what what are the stakes? Yeah, you know, am I going to be put in jail because like yeah. because I cross genres? Yeah. Like, give me a break. None of that matters to me. All that matters is like the spirit of it. Um, and everybody, um, writing their best songs, um, playing and singing their best, doing good shows, supporting each other, having fun. Like, that's what matters. I don't, I don't well, care about all that other stuff. I love what you're doing. I love your attitude. I love your band. So I'm on board with everything. And I want to thank you. Is there anything else that you want to mention before we go? Because, you know, the mic's yours. If you have I, you have a lot of notes. I like yeah, that about Yeah, yeah, thanks. I'll mention two other things. The first is there's one band on the label that we didn't talk about, and that's Devil Love. And um, they came out with an album called Broken Things. They self-released the album um, before they were on the label, but I put out the, a single of their song, Better, Better, and with an amazing video that um, where we had um, people from the label send in footage. Um, really cool. And a phenomenal band. They're playing Thursday night at the Plow um, with the Double Down with Tom Baker um, and then the other thing just to mention is um, my my country trio, Black Threads, and um, that's with uh, Johnny Shasha 
and Jimmy Scopa. And we just recorded a song for the um, Asa Brebner, the second Asa Brebner tribute oh, great. record. Fantastic. Yeah, and all proceeds will go to um, Asa's family. Um, and we did a cover of Go Downtown. It was super fun. And that's going to be coming out, I think, middle of August. It, Mike saw me looking around because we used to have Ace of Red and the guitars hanging on the wall, but somebody took them. I don't know where they went. Uh, uh, but, you know, we love Ace of Red yeah, around we, here. We were honored to be asked to contribute to that record. And, and we just loved the song. We all like went crazy recording. It was super fun and like really, um, really, really felt good to be able to do something for his family. Well, there's a Red on Red Bandcamp page, and you can find a lot of stuff there. Is there a Red on Red website that we want to tell um, people about? I don't, I don't have a website for the band. I do uh, Bandcamp, um, and yeah, all you have to do is Google awesome. Red on Red Records at Bandcamp, and you'll see um, on the main page all of the artists listed with um, with all of the um, singles, and you can you can listen to them, stream them first, decide whether you want to buy them, yeah, name your own them. price. I bought a few. We Everyone also have should. merch. We have T-shirts. <laughs> um, I have the back catalog for Justine and the Unclean and the Black Threads on on CD and Justine the Unclean on a white vinyl. You can get that there. So Ooh, yeah, really, it's like, it's like white vinyl with like a little bit of purplish black so it looks kind of dirty so because it's like unclean probably end up getting yeah, one of those yeah. <laughs> um yeah i should have brought you I one i can't help um, myself yeah when it comes and, to vinyl you know oh the other thing just to mention is um we are planning a big halloween party um october 30th it's, it's right around the corner i know it is it's going to be at the french american victory club which is right across the street from woolly mammoth and i'm putting it on in partnership with david minahan um, he's going to be providing the sound system in the back line, and Whoa, we're going to have nice. Hey Blondie, which is obviously a Blondie tribute, Beth, which is a Kiss tribute, uh, Kid Gulliver. Let me guess, John Lynch has something to do with the <laughs> Beth tribute. He guy. sings for it. <laughs> there <yes>. you go. <laughs> and it's phenomenal. They don't dress up, but they're amazing. Um, it's it's Johnny Lynch, uh, Ed V, Jim Genota on drums, Whoa. Yeah, and Charles Hansen. <laughs> Talk about an all-star band. Yeah, they're Might great. Have to come out of my, uh, you know, cave for that one. You don't want to miss that. Also, the party has a theme. It's dressed like a rock star, so you can dress up like your favorite rock star if you want to. But uh, Kid Gulliver and Justin the Unclean are part of that, and I think Andrea Gillis is going to play there too. That sounds fantastic. Halloween. Oh, and the Evil Streaks just added the Evil Streaks too. Halloween in in Watertown, Waltham, Waltham. 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 But I'm telling you, it's a great place. Three, <laughs> I call it Waltham. Capacity, 350, nice stage, uh, full bar, it's parking. Like, it's like a hall, like an American Legion sure hall. Is. I love those kind of yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah. David, because he, he they're right across the street, David is tight with the people that manage the club, and they are super nice. Like I'm really excited about that show. Well, we got a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Justine, thanks a lot for Thank coming you. on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful, great having wonderful you. to be here. Cool.
That was the fantastic single, Real Love, from Lee Harrington and Linda Mandolin. Lee, of course, of the Neighborhoods fame. And uh, Linda from Tiger Bomb, which I heard is going to be doing some shows. I was wondering if that band was still together. And they are, because I've been seeing that they're listening. They're a Portland main band. Really cool. Justine was really easy to interview because she came in here. She was well prepared. She had all these notes. She was just It was just a really easy interview for me. So I, I really love when people come in here and they know what they're going to talk about. And I didn't really have to, uh, I didn't have to pry her for info and stuff. She had everything right there in front of her. And uh, check out some of that stuff on Red on Red. It's all on Bandcamp. Really cool label. I love the way that Red on Red and Rumbar Records coexist as two separate labels, but kind of act like one. They're like all friends. A lot of the bands cross over. I think that's really good for the Boston music scene uh, right now. And I, you know, with the re- with the reemergence of the whole music scene, we hope, you know, we hope. All we can say is we hope because Honestly, every day I wonder what's going on with this pandemic, if it's ever going to go away. I heard today we might, everyone's going to have to start wearing masks, masks again. I don't have a problem with it. I have my mask in my pocket right now. If there's a mandate, if people want to see the ID, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not vaccinated and you don't have your ID, you're probably not going to be able to go anywhere. So you might as well think about that. If you want to go to shows, you want to go out to eat, and you want to do things, you might want to consider, I'm not here to push vaccines on anyone. Like I mentioned last week on the show with Ellie and Joe from The Charms, I'm not a big needle guy and I didn't really want to get that, the vaccine, but I did it for other people. I didn't do it for myself. So you might want to think about that. Um, also want to mention, like I did last week, Baby Loves Tacos in Pittsburgh, because they've been a big supporter of this podcast since day one. Zach has been there with me since day one. They created a market at their Millville location. If you go on their Instagram page, at Baby Loves Tacos, you can see it. And if you're ever near Pittsburgh, please check out one of the Baby Loves Tacos locations. The food is fabulous. The people are fantastic, and I highly recommend it. Same with JLS Design in Leicester, Mass. They do custom screen printing and embroidery. Uh, you can check them out at jlsdesignprinting.com. Their email address is JLS, jlsdesignsales at gmail.com. Calm. And that's my friend Dave Spaz, who's a musician. He's got the band Peak 15. He played with the Liars for a long time, was in Little Big Wheel, or I heard are going to be doing some shows soon. And um, support those businesses. They need your help right now. I want to thank everyone that's been supporting, speaking of support, us this show on patreon.com forward slash Twisted Rico. Please write me at twistedrico at gmail.com with your requests, questions, whatever. Check out the Instagram page at Blowing Smoke with TR, the Twitter page at Blowing Smoke BS on Twitter. There's also a Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico YouTube page. I know this is a lot of info and I give it to you every week, but I, I really appreciate the support. I love hearing from people. Thanks to Mike Nash here at Voice Motel for engineering the show today. And uh, for also doing the other show, which I'm part of, one of the other shows, which I'm part of, seems to me with Sibylline Seriano, we're going to be back in the studio next week recording, expect more shows um, from us on with that show. And then, you know, you can hear everything on Apple, Spotify, Anchor, Google, Breaker, etc. And uh, also some of the shows on YouTube. So till the next time we say goodbye, this is Blowing Smoke with Twisted Rico. I'm your host, Steve Ricardo. Keep the rock and roll alive. Voice is recorded at Voice Motel, voicemotel.com, your complete podcast recording experience, located in Union Square, Somerville, Massachusetts.